So we're going to focus for a little bit on, um, on the case of uh, parametric curves, either in space like this one or a curve in the plane, in which case there just wouldn't be um, a z-coordinate there. So we know that uh, since this has uh, three outputs and um, one input, that um, the derivative is um, a 3 by 1 matrix. So, but a 3 by 1 matrix is also just a vector, right? Well, the derivative would be the derivative of x with respect to time, the derivative of y with respect to time, the derivative of z with respect to time. Remember that a comma means over, so this is actually a tall, skinny matrix that has um, three rows and one column. Any problem with t? Okay, so we know that we take the derivative, right? We get this, but what does that mean for this function? Well, um, if you look at what x prime of t is, go back to the Calc 1 definition, right? It's the limit as h tends to 0 of x of t plus h minus x of t all over h. That would be the same thing as, um, so if we took the limit as h tends to 0 of r of t plus h, that would be a whole vector, right, minus um, r of t. <coughs> all over h, we're really saying, okay, for each of the components, we're going to take x of t plus h minus x of t and divide by h. We'll take y of t plus h minus y of t divide by h, and so on. So we're really just taking the limit as h tends to 0. In this case, if we subtract these components and divide like that, we've just got a big vector where we have x of t plus h minus x of t all over h y of t plus h minus y of t all over h, and um, z of t plus h minus z of t all over h. OK. Well, this form is important. We can see that when, if we do this, that's the same as just calculating the derivatives of the individual pieces, right? This is just going to give that. So this is important, though, because it gives us a visualization of what's happening when we find dr dt. First, we can think about r of t as giving us a vector from the origin to our location at any time. So this would be r at some time t. And if t advances a little bit, then r is going to move over to this new point, um, t plus h. So remember when we talked about vector subtraction, the way you subtract two vectors is um, you put them tail to tail, and then you draw an arrow from the head of the one you're subtracting to the head of the one you're subtracting from. So here's that difference, r of t plus h minus r of t. And we can see that as t changes, maybe I could draw in the curve that's being swept out by our vector-valued function. So this is, this is the curve that's the, the, the space curve that we're talking about when we're talking about r of t, right? is this curve that's swept out by the head of this vector rt, its tail, we assume, is glued to the origin here. OK, so we're taking that difference, which we can see would be this, this vector here, right? And we're dividing it by h and taking the limit as h tends to 0. And you can see, as h tends to 0, these two vectors are going to get closer and closer together. Um, and, and so their difference is going to get smaller but we're dividing by h, so the smaller h gets, the smaller number we divide by, that keeps this vector from shrinking away. It doesn't just completely disappear. In the limit, as h goes to 0, what we get is, if this is r of t, r prime of t is going to be a vector that's just tangent to the curve. Can you see, see as, as t goes to 0, then this vector is going to move back, and the difference between those two is going to be more and more like a tangent vector. Dividing by h is going to keep it from, from disappearing. So our interpretation of r prime of t is that it is tangent to the tangent to the curve swept out by r. So it gives us something that is tangent to the curve. It also was telling us how much r is changing, how much our position is changing. And change in position is equal to velocity. So when we have a vector-valued function, if we take its derivative, we get the velocity vector, r prime of t. Now, if we want to find the speed, then what we can do is take the length of the velocity vector. So the length of r prime of t, or a lot of times we call 
since it, since r prime is velocity, we could call it v of t. That's going to be to take the square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared plus z prime t squared. If we take another derivative, we're going to look at how r prime is changing. So we'll have um, then we'll have a vector that um, We'll have a vector that tells us how the velocity is changing. Change in velocity is acceleration. So acceleration is going to be, we'll usually call it a of t. That's going to be the derivative of the velocity, or the second derivative of position. Let's look at um, a couple examples here. We have this um, vector valued function r. So if we want to find the velocity, that would be r prime of t. This is going to find a vector that's that's tangent to the curve that r sweeps out. And let's see, that's just going to be the derivative of the first component with respect to t. The derivative of 2t minus 1 is 2, so we get 2 times the unit vector j. And the derivative of t cubed is 3t squared times the vector k. And that's our velocity, r prime. And our acceleration, r double prime, or the derivative of the velocity, or I guess I could label it, uh, maybe I'll label it over here as acceleration. Right? Acceleration is the derivative of velocity, or change in velocity, and the change of velocity is change in position, or um, velocity is change in position, so acceleration is the second derivative of position. Let's see, if we take another derivative, take the derivative of the velocity, we're going to get 2, and then we get 0j, and then the derivative of 3t squared is uh, 6t, so we get 2i plus 6t. K. So here's our velocity. This is our acceleration. Um, we want the speed. The speed is going to be the length of the velocity vector, which this velocity vector, its length is, if you square 2t, you get 4t squared. If you square 2, you get 4. If you square 3t squared, you get 9t to the fourth. So um, this particular um, vector valued function, the, the speed is not constant, right? You can see the bigger t gets, um, the larger the, the speed gets for this function, and the longer the vector, the, the longer the velocity vector gets. Once we have the speed, we could go back to the velocity. If we take the velocity and we divide by the speed, we'll get a unit vector, right? If you take any vector and divide by its length, you'll get a vector that has length 1. So we get the direction of the velocity by taking the velocity divided by the speed. Let's see, the velocity was 2t, so if we divide by the speed, we have 2t over the square root of 4t squared plus 4 plus 9t to the fourth um, times i plus 2 over the speed. Be 2 over 4t squared plus 4 plus 9t to the fourth times j. Um, plus 3t squared over the square root of 4t squared plus 4 plus 9t to the fourth. So this gives us um, a, a vector that is tangent to the curve because the velocity is tangent to the curve, but this vector has length 1. So you could say it's a, a unit tangent. Sometimes we call that bold t for the unit tangent vector. You can actually write the velocity um, since a vector has two things, direction and magnitude, you could write the velocity as the speed. So the speed is 4t squared plus 4 plus 9t to the 4. So there's the speed times the direction. The direction would be a unit vector that points in the, in the same direction that the velocity points in. So, so when we do this, we can take our velocity vector and write it as speed times direction. Just a nice little reminder that every vector consists of two parts, right? A magnitude and a direction. In this case, the magnitude of the velocity is speed. So when we write it this way, we have that the velocity is some speed times a unit vector in the correct direction. So. Remember, when we say a direction, we mean a unit vector.